All right, now today we want to talk about reverse techniques, backward techniques, inward techniques. You know, inhaling, uh, singing, inhaling while you're singing. All these, all these ideas. Drink the tone uh, back and down, slide back and down. Uh, there's a lot of this stuff uh, historically that goes on. Uh, Joan Southern always talked about hanging her voice on a hook in the back of her neck. Uh, Franco Corelli talked about uh, behind the glottal stroke. Now, there's a lot of inward singing, not just outward singing, upward singing, and forward singing. So we have to find out about how to use some of these directions and which one is right for the particular singer that we're talking about. If, let's say I do, uh, let's say I lean my breath here. Nobody knows that one of the most famous singers in history was Beniamino Gili, and he sobbed all the time. If you ever had the good fortune to go to an Orthodox uh, synagogue, you might hear the cantor going, Now what is that? That's forward leaning of the breath against here. What we want to look at today is what's happening on the other end. Imagine there's a ladder. There's always a top and a bottom or a front and a back. What is happening at the other end of the ladder? So if I go, ah, ah, so my breath is leaned here. Now, what if I look behind me or in my back someplace or in my ribs, any place, and find out what is reacting and where and how? So I go, ah, 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 so it feels like I'm holding my breath this way, like that, right there. I can use that as a, as a vocal method. I can sing, if I want to hold my breath somewhere, I can do it there. Um, I remember uh, Mario Domonico said he sang here, and he'd, he would demonstrate this way. Oh, 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 oh. So I go, and there it is. But well, what is the other end doing then back there? What's the other, the other end of my air column? You figure the posture of breath is like this. The posture of the breath moves up and down all the time. And let's say I'm here. Well, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So there's going to be something opposite and equal to this somewhere. So I have to go look and see where. So I go, oh, oh, and then I realize there's something going on way down here. And the pressure started going like this. Now, if I hold that pressure, I can sing that way if I want to. The idea is to make sense to each individual, each individual singer. Some singers feel nothing up here. You can never teach them anything about the resonance because they don't feel anything. I don't know what that is. Maybe they're numb. <laughs> Who knows? Right? But you can teach them to sing the other way around. Teach them to sing inward and backwards. Now, going back to Gili and uh, another fabulous tenor was named Giacomo Lauri Volpi. And Lali Volpi and Gili and uh, um, uh, uh, Carmen Malis, who also taught Tibaldi later, but all three of them started with a man named Antonio Cotogna, and they all were taught to slide back and down. So if I slide back and down, well, now I'm using this business of, the, of what's happening down inside and in the back as my basis of my vocal method. But guess what? It has a reaction up front somewhere, up high, up here, someplace. So I could say, all right, I'm going to slide back and down. No, and find out where my voice is in the front. No, if you do yoga, this is the, the this chakra right here. It's right between the eyes, right there. If I want to use this, I could lean here, and this would have to respond. So I go, Law! now I'm singing here, and this back here is responding. If I do the opposite, Law! now the action's way down in my uh, lower back, and this is the reaction. So let's do a, a, a few of these. This, this method was uh, somewhat made somewhat well known by a man named Max. Lorenz, 
who sang all of the big monster opera, Wagner operas in, uh, during the Second World War in Germany. And he taught uh, uh, James King, among others, and taught them the same way. And the exercise was hung. So you find this, this resonance line, hung, and then you sing over it. Hung, but we can just as well look at what happens on the opposite end of this air column. I can sing down there too. See? So the idea is to, is to find out, first of all, what's happening at both ends of your air column. And then gradually you can sort of, uh, you'll favor one or the other, whichever one sort of makes sense to you or makes you feel more secure. Uh, some, some people prefer to, to watch the results and some people li like to watch the cause. The cause makes you, means that you have to think ahead of time, that's all. You can't wait till you hear the sound and then try to identify it. So those singers, you hear a lot of singers going, trying to hear the voice. Well, the thing that makes the sound has already happened. So why not take a step backwards to find out where it's happening? If I can figure out what causes that, I'm a step ahead. See? So you got, you know, there, there, I have endless lists of all these things. This is one little list, as you can see right here, and, and uh, they're all over the place. Here's, uh, let's try uh, one of the great exercises you would hear in Europe would be it's, it's done especially for people that have vocal cord problems. If you have nodules or any kind of problem with your edges of your vocal cords, you go Now, people that have nodules have trouble doing that, but it brings the edges of the, of the vocal cords together in balance and makes them sort of come together exactly at the same time, and you can sort of clean up you can sing these, some of these nodules off of your vocal cords if you know how to do it. You need a teacher who knows how to do it. If you, uh, so the, the, whoever you worked with, whoever your teacher was, gave you a method that caused this nodule, and now you need to find someone who can get you and show you how to get off of, get rid of it. Well, let's say I go, nee, 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 nee. of course, now I feel it up here, and I'm thinking up here, and I'm up here, and I'm pronouncing very, very narrowly, and all of a sudden, let's take a look at the other end and see what's happening. Now I've got it identified, I'm going to sing with that. I'm not thinking about this at all now. I'm thinking about what is going on down here. So some singers sing with the ring around the, the, their, their waist. As long as it is uh, an activity of the breath, uh, a function of supporting the breath, some of these exercises are just fine. To hold them out like this, individually without breathing, you see, it, all it does is cause you tension. So you must always breathe one way or another. The way to breathe is way down your back and get the lungs to go like this. Down in the front and then down in the back. And if you don't believe me, talk to a pulmonologist, which is what I did. I said, why did Caruso and Lady Lehman talk about breathing and Gali Kurchi and all these, uh, Rose Hedger, Rose Fang, all these fabulous singers, Lawrence Melchior, uh, Zinka Milnoff, everybody talked about pulling the abdomen inward when you breathe in. Why do they do that? And he, and he said, oh, it's very obvious. I said, oh, really? Yeah, they, they, what they want to do is... Uh, when you start to breathe in, the front part of the diaphragm goes down, but they wanted, obviously, for the back to go down also. And if you pull the belly in and it's got nowhere to go, uh, it will cause the back half of the diaphragm to go like this. And when it does, you can double your breath capacity. That's all great. Isn't that great? So people have been fighting this battle for years. A lot of people push their stomachs out when they breathe. If I do that, <sighs> puts my voice right in my nose and I can't sing my high notes. I got no room. I'm choking to death up there. I'm going to have to use vowel modification or covering. Yes. If I breathed in the first place, right, uh, I would have breathed way down behind me and let my stomach go in and I get... La 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 
Oh, and the voice passes. They used to use the word pass, by the way, and it's got, then when the Americans started using the word cover, and uh, now the Italians use the word girare, which means to turn, and uh, turn used to mean something else completely, and, uh, and let's see, and, and the Germans say go over, the going over place. So if I can breathe in a certain way, and I can identify what's happening down here. La, 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 la. The voice covers anyway, and passes anyway, and it turns anyway, and I don't have to worry about doing it suddenly, a one note with vowel modification or throat modification. Any action requires an equal and opposite reaction. So if I do a modification of any kind, I'm going to get a reaction. Because it is an action, there has to be one. So it reacts in the breath. So you hear me going, la, and I have to make a great big change in my breathing. And that's damaged a certain number of singers very, very badly. And uh, uh, they get nerve damage. Or one famous baritone had his vocal cord literally torn loose by that. So what if I do uh, the other thing with the bow, and I maintain the down bow, and I go, La You'll notice, when I do that, my voice just passes up into the upper register, no problem. Now, today we're talking about what happens down in the body, let's say, when I down bow. La identify the, the muscular process that's going on down there because I took the breath way down there before I started. And now I'm going to find out what in the world is going on down there because I hear my voice going up and it does pass up into another register and uh, a lot of people say, oh no, that's open, you have to cover. Well, open would be la 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 and the reason it's wrong why is it wrong? Because you have to use muscular action in your throat to accomplish that high note so wide open. If I cover, however, la, 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 I'm also using muscular action to accomplish the cover. And the first rule of the Belcanto school was no action in the throat. So I, I, no matter what I do, I, I end up breaking the first rule. What if I do nothing in my throat? Then I have to have a different way of breathing, different way of supporting. Now comes this, this super legato, which is which we, we call down bow so people can see it. You know? La, la, la. Oh. And you don't have to do anything, you don't have to modify, and the main thing is you don't have to make an action in your throat, which causes you to break rule number two, which is a change of emission. The rule number two was no change of emission. So you're supposed to see a steady stream of sound coming out the whole time, and the, 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 the action is one of maintenance. You're maintaining the function of your breath, and you do not suddenly use part of your muscle to shoot air up there, right? So if I do all of these, we did nini. -nee. Now what happens if I go nee -nee 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 -nee. What is that doing in my body? In spite of that nee, 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 I started with, it's nowhere near my nose now. It's jumped way up and sitting up in my head somewhere. See? So those are little little things that people learned over the years. If I do another one, it's yum yum because the Y, yeah, when I yeah, it causes me to lean on my diaphragm. So if I go, yum, 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 and I look down there and I say, now where is the action that I'm supposed to sustain or, or supposed to somehow continually produce to keep my voice placed like that? So I go, yum, 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 And all I did was maintain this reaction I got when I s vocalized that word, yum yum. And back in the old, 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 old days, 
right? I studied over 60 years ago, and I worked with people that studied 60 years before that, so we're talking about at least 120 years, if not more. Uh, and this is the way they, they, this is the way they learn to sing. They learn to get up and do something with the voice that caused a reaction to the breath. That taught them that it's necessary to breathe a certain way. If I'm going to use it, I have to breathe down behind me. I can't stick my stomach out. If I push my stomach out when I breathe, like a sleeping baby, instead of a baby who's awake and laughing and crying, uh, I've had four babies, believe me, none of them stick their stomachs out except when they're asleep. So if I breathe like I'm asleep and my belly goes out, ah, my wife goes to my nose automatically. So then I have to do something in my throat. I have to release my salt palate or something. Or no, so, on. so you get this kind of funny way of talking. And it's no longer exactly clear diction. And when I have, when it's not necessary. If I put my stomach in and breathe, I go, I literally do nothing. I could cut off my head from here up and there's nothing happening. No throat, no jaw, no tongue, no nothing. And everything happens down below. Now we must identify what happens down below. And that's what this is supposed to, this little talk here we're having. It's supposed to be talking about that. So if I do a bunch of different, let's say I do a tongue drill. I go, even before I open, I can already look and see, try to identify the process that's going on in my body. And if I can keep that process going, I can sing with my throat and tongue that loose. You'll notice my, the root of my tongue is absolutely floppy loose. A lot of people make the mistake of going If you do all the vowels, you got to open and make the vowel with, the vowel is already in there. I'm going A, E, E, O, U. So I don't need to, to, to make an action again. So I go Now what can I identify down in my body? That's the question. The will not happen unless something happens in my body, and that something is what I have to identify. I won't even say which way to do it. I just let you play with it a while, and you do it until you can figure out, identify it for yourself. What the heck am I doing in my body? It's my body and my voice, and what am I doing with it? Then we have things like the lip clamp. So I go, by the way, this is not humming, and it's not an M. It's a lip clamp. Where you press them hard together, I go, mm -hmm. I can do A, A, E, O, U. Now the question is, what does that do inside of me? Because I'm going to open and let it out. And when I do, I'd like to continue producing the sound the way I'm producing as a result of the action of the lip clamp. A lip clamp is an action. It causes a reaction. I'm trying to learn to sing in this case with the reaction. So I go... Mm -hmm. ah. that one very much right here, but it may be different in your body than it is in mine. So that's why you sort of don't imitate anybody, and that anybody that tells you there's only one way to do it, of course, doesn't know anything about singing. There are hundreds of ways of singing that work. People use them all the time, all over the place. And they, you sing all these different operas, and there's a lot of different style, and German language has to be interrupted all the time in the line before a word begins with a vowel. And uh, Italian is completely wrong if you interrupt the whole because of the vowel. French is also all run together, but the French language is very close. You have to learn to open it up and go, start with smiling. And then you start singing that until you can get legato and you can sing in more of an Italian style position. When, what, what did I feel down there when I did that? Now, wait a minute. Which, what, what was happening? See? What's happening? 
Vavle, keď si ma vím, že ty je doma blízo mi teresie. If I can get that identified, I can use it all the time. And all of these identifiers uh, really give you a great idea of, of what you are as a musical instrument. Your entire body is a musical instrument, and you get so that you use the whole thing all the time. Then there is the, uh, the clocks. Uh, the ladies go, ah, oh, and they relax. Make sure everything relaxes and it falls way down in the lower body. goes, oh, and then they... But it jumps up in the head and rings like a bell, uh, and and that's also how, the way you train counter tenors. The really good counter tenors have the same thing. Uh, those those who have beautiful falsetto voices can turn them into true counter tenor voices. Um, and the true counter tenor is more of a mixed process because you mix uh, you mix as if you're singing uh, with your full voice and you're only using part of your voice. So it's it's a very I've worked with a lot of them and. Uh, it's it's so uh, it's fascinating to hear what some of them can do. I've got a super one right now. Uh, his his name is uh, Luis uh, Alvarez, and he's from Peru, and he's got probably the best uh, the best uh, counter tenor voice in the world today. But anyway, the whole idea is I'm going to to make sure constantly that this is doing nothing, and then I'm gonna find a way to sing if I can. And I'm going to, let's say, in the, men, in the male voices, you, you start in falsetto to make sure it's loose and then attach it. So I go, ooh, see everything's loose. Now I'm going to attach it. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Now I'm going to identify what is going on down here when I do that. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. I'm doing is maintaining the process that occurred when I attached my falsetto to my diaphragm. So we can go on and on with these. I may, I may have to make several tapes on these. I'm at uh, 22 minutes already on this one. I think everybody gets bored and wants it too long. But see, I've only done a few of them. Um, uh, you have something like the, like the miniature cough. Oh, that was Manuel Garcia's whole, whole way of teaching. They got world famous teaching this miniature cough attachment. <coughs> now the voice is totally reactive to the fact that my breath is doing something <coughs> coming from behind, so therefore you have to breathe behind you so you can come from there. <coughs> and then you absolutely place it, or place it, cough it, right here. <coughs> and see what my breath is doing. What's happening in my back and all of that. Can I repeat it? <laughs> so, as we go through, I used to call these instigators because they do things that cause things. They instigate process and action-reaction systems. And you get so that you can do them. The hiccup is another one. No, what is doing my body? What is doing my body? No, <laughs> see what's happening? I'm singing with the response to the hiccup. <laughs> then you can decide what comes first, the chicken or the egg, or the action or the reaction. If I make the action up here, at least psychologically, I'm making it here. But where's the other end of it? And, what, and, and not only where is it, but how does it function? How, what really happens? So uh, I think I'll go ahead and continue. Maybe we'll make several of these because uh, there's a lot, a lot of these to cover. And they all work. Remember that. I mean, I stole every one of them from some famous singer. <laughs> or he gave them to me or she gave them to me. And uh, I used them myself and I sang 64 roles for 45 years. And I still sing, I'm 83. I still sing all day, every day. So uh, there's something about these that works, okay? At least you can have a lot of fun with it. So uh, we'll be back. We'll continue this one.